So in the last couple of videos, we've been looking at water drops in one way or another, either refraction or just a simple water drop. In this video, I'm going to talk about something we haven't actually covered yet, and that's coloured water drops. The coloured water drop is something I've not done much of, to be honest with you. And that is simply where we put some food colouring into some water and use that in our images. But more importantly, we want to try and use some sort of complementary colours. Things like white and blue, things like that. On my desk, I've got several flowers. I've got obviously my favourite, which is the Jabroa Daisy. They're coming quite small this season for some reason, but hey, <laughs> you have to live with that. But yeah, Jabroa Daisies, they are probably a macro photographer's best friend at the moment. I love those flowers. I've got some water, a couple of containers to mix the water in, and a selection of um, food dyes. Now, I got these originally, the oil, acrylic paint, and milk video. So, I, you know, I threw some of that into there, into the mix to see what happens. And I just bought one of each colour that the shop had. And, of course, we have kitchen toweling, just in case there's a slip-up, and my trusty torch, in case we need to add that extra light. And again, as usual, I have my specimen holder and my syringe for applying the water drop. So, what I want to do is get an extra tripod out. The first thing I want to try is a blue water drop on a white flower. So we've got this white flower here, and we have two of them. They have kind of a, um, a green centre to them. What I want to do is place a water drop on one of the petals and then have the other one in the background. So I'm going to use the bigger one for the background, because the bigger the flower, the easier it is to set up the background. And then I want to pick a nice petal. I'm looking for a nice flat petal if I can. There we go. And again, as always, I'm going to place that petal into my specimen holder, being very careful because these are very delicate petals, these are. There we go. So the big flower, that's going to go in the background. Let's put that in. Something like that. You see there? Okay. So let's get the camera set up now. Because again, we do the water drop last because if you do it first and then set up the camera, it starts to evaporate. When I'm doing water drops, I like to keep my aperture wide open so you can get that nice dreamy look. So we're going to go with 2.8. I'll keep my ISO at 400. Again, that's one of my favourite ISOs for this particular camera. We'll focus. There we go. Now from that view, I need to bring up my camera a little bit. And I'm not looking at the petal. I'm looking at the flower in the background. So I'm framing it up based on the flower in the background. And I want the dark spot of the background flower in the center of my image. So then once we've done that, we can start manipulating this petal so that it is right in front of that dark spot. So you can imagine now that the drop is going to be on that petal and lit up. So let's take a look at what that looks like with our light. Again, we've got to bump up that bit of speed. And the first colour I'm going to try on this particular shot is a blue colour. Because I want to do some more shots on the other flowers as well. I'm going to use blue. I'm going to pop a bit of water into my little container and these are specimen uh, containers this is what we receive our spiders in when they're very very young okay and we have some blue dye here that i'm just going to tip in and of course you could just use the blue dye if you wanted to always try different stuff because you never know what is going to work put the top on and give it a good shake okay now I want to be careful with this because we don't want to get this blue dye on my white desk because it's going to stain it, okay? Right. Let's go ahead and place a drop onto our petal. I'm going to put it right on the edge. And bearing in mind that you might not get that refraction effect with this particular drop. Depending on what substance you use to dye it, it might not quite... Give you that refraction uh, effect that you might be looking for but for a start it's looking okay okay so let's take a test shot now 
I'm going to put my torch in the background like I usually do and just see what we get out of this. And I can see that the drop is going to be a little bit too dark for you to see that it's blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on the whole scene just so you can see that it is a blue drop. There we go. Okay, so the one thing that's not quite working is the petal because the petal has like a curve to it. So the drop is sitting in the petal. So I'm going to turn that upside down. Reposition the, um, the petal in our frame there. And you see that little tip right at the end of the petal? That's where I want the drop to be. Okay, there you go. You can see it there. And again, don't try to put the drop all on at once because it's just not going to work very good. I generally do it a little bit at a time and then build it up. That's a big drop. Okay. So I'm going to have to drop the uh, camera down slightly. Adjust this very slightly, just so it's right behind. Although it's not doing much, it's not refracting like it would do in the uh, the other um, drops that we've done. It's still giving us an interesting image. Let's hit critical focus now. And on most of my droplet photography, um, I focus on the edges of the drop. In this case, I'm going to bring up my f-stop a little bit just so as I can get a little bit more of the drop in focus and again while we're messing around doing this your drop is actually evaporating so you do need to go quite quickly we're going to use the ambient light this time let's take a picture okay let's try it with the torch now I'll put the torch in the background first what I want to do just move the torch around to see what we get when we're moving it around a bit. Let's do the background first. And I'm going to put my f-stop up. Again, always play with the settings. Okay. So now that critical focus, because again, it's moved while we've been messing around. And get kind of a, a silhouette image there with the little highlight of a blue which looks uh which you know it looks okay that does and i'm just taking images just to see what we can get out of it what different type of images we can do and then we'll take that into lightroom and have a play so that's the first thing that we can do so another shot i might look at doing is this one where we're going to look down into the center of the flower. I can't quite see the center, so I'm just going to tip it slightly. Just so as we can see the center there. Focus on the center. There we go. And of course, we can always crop it slightly after we've taken the image. Let's put a, uh, a blue drop in there, shall we? Because the size of drop we've got to use to get it so it's actually visible in the camera is going to be massive. There we go. You can see where we're focusing on. Let's uh, zoom it in and hit critical focus. There we go. Punch it out. And I'm going to do one with the ambient light okay and then i'm going to do some with the torch so that we can up our just speed a little bit and you notice how the white balance changes because the uh, the white balance on the camera is set to flash and i always have it set to flash because most of the time i'm using flash but because i'm shooting in war it doesn't matter because I can change it afterwards. And to be honest with you, most of the time I change the uh, the white balance anyway in post. Let's do another one. Okay, again, I'm going to increase my f-stop now. F8. Let's 
zoom it in, check our depth of field preview. Yep. And of course, you can always mix and match these things. We'll be doing some light painting on all kinds of things like that. So here are some more shots I've done using coloured water drops. All these images have been edited in Lightroom using my Macro Preset 2021. So if you are going to give this a go, here's a tip I'm going to tell you, but I'm not going to show you on this particular video, is you can switch to flash and create yourself a little snoot with a very, very pinhole um, snoot and point the pinhole of light straight onto the drop. Give that a go, yeah? I think that could turn out to have some good results. So there you have it, coloured water drops. Go out, give it a go, I'd love to see your results. So let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below. My name's Stuart Wood, and again, as always, I'll see you on the next video. Fruit flies, pain in the ass. So for the last few videos, we've been looking at what... Great start, great start. For the, uh, the rubber on my, um, my headphones is wearing out. So before I do a recording, I have to check to see if there's any black uh, foam stuck to my face. So that's what that's about anyway. A couple of containers to mix the water drip drops in when i did the um the oil we, this is what we receive our so, um depth of field preview nope that's not it's due